One-click RCE in Asus's pre-installed driver software. I saw this article, I had to read it, uh, primarily because two things. One, my motherboard fried a long time ago and it was Asus and I'm still mad about it. But also two, I once again went out and bought another Asus motherboard. So I would like to know if there is a, a remote code execution vulnerability in the current setup that I have in my studio. Let's dive right in. Introduction. The story begins the conversation about PC parts, about new PC parts. I hope you're not getting it for the Wi-Fi. Not particularly, I'll be using the Wi-Fi though if needed. I don't know a lot about MOBOs. After ignoring the advice from my friend, I bought a new Asus motherboard for my PC. I was a little concerned about having a BIOS that would try to silently install software into my OS in the back. <laughs> in the, yeah, that, yeah. But it could be turned off, so I figured I would just do that. Yeah, so this is one of those things that I'm really not super into, uh, but like there are a lot of new motherboards that come out that allow the user to just have stuff put on the, onto the computer, like without you asking. And, and like what it just, it's weird because like obviously the BIOS is a lower ring than your OS. So like it's allowed to do that. But the fact that it does do this and like in your BIOS, you can just like turn it on, like install applications for me when I'm not looking is like super weird. Now guys, I can assure you the story today is pretty good, but an even cooler story is the one from the sponsor of today's video. It's me. Guys, I honestly believe that if you're a programmer trying to write fast, effective code, or you're a cybersecurity professional trying to stop your stuff from getting attacked, all of these require you to know the basic fundamentals of computers. My courses on the Level Academy teach you languages like C, networking in C, threading in C, assembly, and even a new installment, Rust, to learn the basics of how computers work. And Zero to Hero C programming will teach you the basics of the C programming language, the language that runs all other languages. And you can even learn arrays in C right now for free, go check that lesson out. If you wanna learn assembly, my arm load operations lesson is also free. And I also have a free three day C course that you can check out right here on the landing page. Guys, if you want to be a good programmer, you gotta know the fundamentals. And where do you learn the fundamentals? On Low Level Academy. All right guys, back to the video. See you there. Immediately after logging onto Windows, I was hit with a notification. I'm actually curious, how does this even work? Like how, how does it hook the OS on the way up to like do this? Like where does that process happen? That's very interesting. Immediately after logging into Windows, I was hit with a notification requesting admin permissions to complete the installation of Asus Driver Hub because I forgot to change the BIOS option. Oh, yikes, so he didn't even turn this off. It just happened automatically. Since I needed to get a Wi-Fi driver from the motherboard anyway, I got curious and installed it. Uh, would you like to install the Armory Crate and Land Driver? Uh, funny story, actually, I have this installed right now. I'm probably gonna go disable this real quick, BRB. I don't have a screenshot of Driver Hub, but it showed up like a pop-up exactly like this in the bottom right hand of my screen. Dude, this reminds me of like when you were a kid, if you would, if you deleted something or like like Empire Earth wouldn't run, it said like, you can't find directx 329dll So you would go and Google like uh, directx 329dll download and you would get some sketchy like, oh, go to dllfiles.com and install our DLL installer. Like that kind of shit, it looks, it looks exactly like that. It, it looks like one of those sketchy freaking websites. That's crazy. Okay. Driver Hub is an interesting piece of driver software because it doesn't have any GUI. Instead, it's just a background process that communicates with the website driverhub.asus.com and tells you what drivers to install for your system and which ones need updating. Naturally, I wanted to know more about how this website knew what drivers my system needed and how I was installing them. So I cracked open the Firefox network tab. And as expected, the website uses RPC to talk to the background process running on my system. This is where the background process hosts an HTTP or WebSocket service locally, which a website or service can connect to by sending an API request to 127001-53000. Yo. Okay, so immediately, immediately, yeah, this guy, my hacker senses are tingling. Mine are, mine are tingling too. Like, if you just have an RPC daemon that the web browser can access, that screams vulnerabilities to me. Now, ideally, they're doing some kind of sanitization and like SSL TLS certificate pinning so that like not anybody can talk to that daemon. But immediately, this is not smelling good to me. All right. This is a very sketchy way to design driver management software. Yeah, it is, Asus. What the hell are you doing? If the RPC isn't properly secured, it can be weaponized by an attacker to install malicious applications. Yeah, so again, like he, he and I are on the same page here. This is fucking crazy. Finding the vulnerability. Okay, so there there was a bug. Oh God, I mean, obviously he wrote an article, so like you wouldn't just write it about nothing, but still. 
The next step was to see if I could call the RPC from any website. This was replicated by copying the request from my browser as a curl command and pasting it into my terminal. After fiddling with variations of the command for a while, my assumptions were confirmed. DriverHub only responded to the requests with the origin header set to driverhub.asus.com. So at least the website wasn't completely busted and evil. Hackers can't just send requests to DriverHub willy-nilly. I mean, sure, but like an origin check isn't super good either because like if there's not any certificate pinning on this, anybody could set their origin to be anything. You could just like do a DNS spoofing or like there's a lot of ways you could get around that. However, I wasn't done yet. Yeah, I hope not. Presumably the program checks that the origin is driverhub.asys.hub, and if so, it accepts the RPC request. What I did next was see if the program did a direct comparison like origin equals, or if it was a wild card like origin.includes. Oh no. When I <laughs> when I switched the origin to driverhub.asys.com.mrbroad.com, is who is this? Is Mr. Broad this guy? Oh, I'm literally on mrbroad.com. Okay, I understand now. It allowed my request, brother. <laughs> No way, man. Oh no, dude. <sighs> There's this thing in software where I think like, oh, if they're writing UEFI firmware, if they're releasing motherboards and obviously they're skilled programmers and obviously they're gonna know like security principles and like the basics of setting boundaries in software, but using a wildcard on an origin header is just like, guys, are we, are, are, we, what are we, are we trying or what? It was obvious that now there was a serious threat. The next step was to determine how much damage was possible. Yeah, so effectively, there's no authentication on this RPC daemon. He can just arbitrarily set his origin header to something that contains this and bada bing, bada boom, he gets to talk to the RPC. The extent of the damage. By trawling through the JavaScript on the website and about 700k lines of decompiled code that an EXE produced, I managed to create a list of callable endpoints, including some unused ones sitting in the EXE. So these are all endpoints, I guess. So initialize. This command is used for the website to check if the software is installed and returns basic installation information. Uh, device info. This returns all installed ASUS software, all installed sys drivers, all your hardware components, and your MAC address. Bro, and they, again, like, this is the weird thing with diagnostic software or like debug information. It's like, okay, is this spyware or is this diagnostics? Again, I'm an asshole. This is why I largely disable any kind of telemetry from any piece of software ever. Like Steam wants to do like, oh, can we do like a hardware survey on your, on your computer to figure out what graphics card you have? Absolutely not, Valve, fuck off, nope. And then reboot, this reboots target device immediately without confirmation. That's, that's something. Oh, and there's an RCE button. He, so just for, for the group, right? If, you're, if, you're, if you've lost track, he made this website. This isn't actually real, but this is him writing his own website so that he can interact with the backend RPC. So I'm assuming he got RCE. Well, actually the article is literally called One Click RCE. So, I mean, he did, right? This is the button that enables him to do it. Okay, a log. This returned a zip copy of all driver hub logs. Install app. Okay, this installs an app or driver by its ID. The IDs for all the apps are hard coded in an XML file, which is provided by the driver hub installer. Okay, so there is at least some layer of sandboxing, right? It's not like, oh, install app, give it a URL, it'll pull down an EXE and run the EXE. Update app, the self updates driver hub using a provided file URL to download and run. Oh, okay, so like install app doesn't, but if you want to update driver hub, you can just give it the URL. Hold on. Achieving RCE, I became fixated on the update app endpoint for a variety of reasons. So I spent a few hours exploring the code in Ghidra and hitting it with various curl requests to learn the intricacies of how it behaves. A request to the endpoint looks like this. Curl the RPC endpoint, Asus v1 update app, raw data, list URL, driverhub asus.com app.exe, okay? Uh, that makes sense. So you're asking the RPC endpoint to update driver hub with some application. Okay, and hopefully they're checking that the application is signed. Let's see. Here were the observations I had made about the update app function at that point. The URL parameter must contain .asus.com, but unlike the RPC origin check, it allows stupidity like example.com payload.exe foo equals asus.com. Brother Bill, man, there's no way. There's no way they're doing like a regex dot star regex, like a, a regex for Asus. I mean, they are, but fucking, that's crazy. It saves a file with the file name specified at the end of the URL. Any file with any extension can be downloaded, insane. If the file is an executable signed by Asus, it will be automatically executed with admin permissions. Oh, okay, signed by Asus, good, that's a good thing. 
it will run any executable signed by Asus, not just a driver hub installer. That is weird, you know? I mean, like, it makes sense because, like, Asus is the one running this, so the, the privilege boundary is Asus, but still, weird. If a downloaded file fails to signing checked, it does not get deleted. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, hold on. When I learn that driver hub validates the signature of the executable, I suspected an RCE may no longer be possible. However, I soldiered on regardless. Yes, baby, don't let valid cryptography get in your way. There are always workarounds. My first thought was potentially a timing attack where I tell driver hub to install a valid executable and after it validates the signature, but just before it installs the EXE, I swap it out with a malicious executable. Ooh, like a time of check, time of use in the signing. Interesting, I theorize this could be possible by making two app update requests in parallel with the malicious update being just after the legitimate one. Yeah, no, that's great. However, timing attacks, attacks need to be precisely timed and having that timing being affected by files need to be downloaded made it a very unreliable option. Given that, I decided to take a step back and think if there were any other options. I mean, this is good though. Like if he could predict the size of the two files and figure out what the timing delta was based on size, he could download the Asus signed app, and as it was beginning to run, the other app comes in off the wire, replaces that application, and then the first thread context executes that first application, right? That's a traditional time of check, time of use. If the access to that first EXE is not locked, right, with some kind of like, like synchronization primitive, um, you could do that 100%. Now, obviously, it's harder to do than what he eventually found, I'm guessing, but still really interesting. Eventually, I was led back to the standalone Wi-Fi driver I was going to install all along, the driver was distributed in the following zip file. Yeah, don't forget guys, this whole this whole saga was just this guy trying to figure out a way to get Wi-Fi to work on his MOBO. So that's, that's pretty crazy. Okay, the files of importance here are Asus setup.ini, silent install that CMD. When executing Asus setup, it first reads Asus setup.ini, which contains metadata about the driver. I took interest in a property in the file, a silent install run. When you double click Asus setup.exe, it launches a simple GUI installer thing. But if you run Asus setup with the dash S flag, driver hub calls it to do a silent install. It will execute whatever is specified in silent install run. In this case, the any file specifies a command script that performs an automated headless install of the driver, but it could run anything. No way. Okay, yeah, so what he can do, download this custom Asus setup anything, it will run whatever is in this path. That's nuts. Okay, so let's go through this. Visit a website, yeah, so you have to match their stupid origin request header thing. Download via the update app through the browser the script for asus setup.ini, and asus setup.ini will silently run calc.exe, and when you make that request, it'll pull down a signed file, but it'll also pull down that INI with admin, per with admin permissions, holy shit. RCE, bada boom, he popped the calc. Crazy behavior, that's nuts. That is nuts. Okay, timeline reporting. We gotta give credit to Asus. How quickly did they fix this? So he found it on April 7th. Damn, he's using communist timestamps. It's crazy. Okay, found the initial bug, got the RCE, reported it same day, good for him. Automated response from Asus on the 9th. Nine days later, he got a follow-up with the human, confirmed the fix a day after. Okay, so he had a nine-day turnaround, then he got two, wow, two CVEs, one was a 9.4. What's the, what is the actual write-up on this? The issue is limited to motherboards, feels weird, because this could affect a lot of other software, but let's see, let's see what he has to say. Assessing the damage, uh, almost immediately after reporting the, the RCE to Asus, I wrote a script to track certificate transparency updates on my VPS to see if anyone else had registered a domain with the wildcard, okay. From looking at other websites with that log, I could see the domains and subdomains would already appear in the logs usually within a month. After a month of waiting, I'm happy to say that my test domain is the only website that fits that regex, meaning it is unlikely that this was being actively exploited prior to my reporting of it. Good, no, that's good to hear. Kind of scary this was probably sat out for so long, but I'm happy to hear that nothing, uh, nothing scary happened. Bug bounty. I asked Asus if they offered bug bounty programs. They responded saying they do not, but they would instead put my name in their hall of fame. This is understandable since Asus is just a small startup and like, wait, wait, I thought, isn't Asus a huge company? Oh, <laughs> he's, he's being a jokester, bro. Market cap of nearly $16 billion and bro got a shout out, hold on. And he got a shout out on the hall of fame, Mr. Bro, April, 2025. You hate to see it, dude. That's crazy as hell. Fun notes. 
After publishing the article, another security researcher reached out. It turned out that they had already reported the same origin check issue back in February and took in until now for Asus to fix it. Oh my God. Okay, that's significantly worse than I thought. Asus did not inform me of this, so it felt a bit bad to be stung like that. Asus also solely credited that security research on CV.page. Oh, and they didn't add him to the credit section. Oh, shit. Okay, so he found this bug, but didn't get credit for the CV. That kind of sucks, man. When submitting the vulnerability report through Asus's security advisory form, uh, Amazon CloudFront flagged the attached POC as a malicious request and blocked the submission. Dude. Oh, my God. Uh, some... It just, it's just crazy to me that, like, this implies that whoever designed this system to do the bug reporting didn't test it, or they're just not watching their audit logs. Like, both of those are insane mistakes. So I had to strip some of the POC code out and link video recordings instead. Ah, fuck, man, that's wild. If you click Install All in Driver Hub instead of manually clicking Install All on each of their recommended drivers, it will also install Armory Crate, Asus's custom CPU-Z, Norton 360, and WinRAR. Yes, I, I literally have Armory Crate on this computer in my studio, and I'll randomly have Norton, like, appear on my computer. I'm like, bro, I don't, I don't want Norton. I, I would like to use Windows Defender alone, and Norton still appears, and I have to manually get rid of it every time. Their CVE description for the RCE is a little misleading. They say, yeah, no, exactly. They had, the, like, this, this thing. The issue is limited to motherboards and does not affect laptops, desktop computers. However, this affects any computer, including desktops and laptops, that have Driver Hub installed. Yeah, this is not a motherboard issue. This has nothing to do with motherboards, by the way. This is literally, if you have Driver Hub installed, I'm saying hub so much in this video, um, you are affected. Also, instead of them saying it allows for arbitrary code execution, they say it allows untrusted sources to affect system behavior. That's nuts, dude. It's like back in like 06 when CVEs would come out and it would be like Cisco iOS 9 vulnerable to DOS by malformed IPv4 packet. Like, yeah, dude, it's a DOS, but like it could also be RCE. You know what I mean? Like you're hiding behind this weird verbiage. It's the same thing here. Like allowing untrusted sources to affect your system's behavior. Yeah, in the form of running arbitrary binaries, you asshole. Like, holy crap. My onboard Wi-Fi still doesn't work. I had to buy an external USB Wi-Fi adapter. Thanks for nothing, driver hub. Crazy stuff, guys. Yeah, man, it's just, I have this weird thing about like UEFI developer people, people that were like making motherboards, make this firmware. In my head, because this stuff is so complicated, like bootloaders and like UEFI loaders and stuff, that stuff is so hard to do. I think intrinsically, I'm like, oh, obviously they're good developers. I mean, they must know what they're doing. But then you hear about this stuff and it's like, okay, they're probably really, really good about telling you of like the startup sequence for like an X64 processor. But the minute you get into like security boundary land of like preventing this daemon from being able to affect this daemon, it just, all that shit goes out the window. The fact that it's doing regex checks on the origin header as like its main authentication is crazy. I am impressed that they're doing binary signing. Like they're checking to see if the, the binary that you download is signed by Asus, which like when I saw this, I'm like, oh, okay, it's gonna be a nothing burger. But then this file can just run arbitrarily anything. It's just wild to me. Anyway, guys, if you like these kinds of videos, do me a favor, hit that like button, hit subscribe, and then go check out this video about an even crazier story that I once read. We'll see you there. Goodbye.